News reporting just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. They always ask me, why don't you respect journalism departments? Well, you're going to find out now why. Here's the title. Kyle Rittenhouse's lawyer claims he opened fire at BLM protest because victim was convicted sex offender. Hey, you've got to be kidding me. Hello out there. I am trying to get through. With his powerful brain waves cradled in the warmth of reasoning, it's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's the Johnny Walker Dread Show. All right, this real work of art is by Dorian Geiger and was published on July 8th. It reads, a lawyer for Kyle Rittenhouse, the teenager accused of fatally shooting two demonstrators and wounding another at a Black Lives Matter protest last summer, claimed this week that he had gunned down one victim because he was a sex offender. No, that's not what the lawyer is saying, you big dummy. According to a motion filed in court Thursday, Rittenhouse's legal team is arguing that the teen opened fire on Joseph Rosenbaum in Kenosha because the man wasn't legally able to own his own gun due to his criminal history. No, that's not what they're saying. As a convicted felon and sex offender, he was unable to legally possess a firearm he was seeking to steal from my client, Mark Richards. Rittenhouse's defense lawyer told Oxygen on Thursday, that is true. That's a far cry from saying that Kyle shot him because he was unable to legally possess a firearm. Mark Richards is just laying out a condition related to the actual charge. Kyle opened fire on Joseph Rosenbaum because he was in fear of his life or he feared serious bodily injury. It turns out that Joseph Rosenbaum was a convicted sex offender. And this could lay down some context in the fear that Kyle underwent when he was attacked. And the fact that Kyle had a gun and Rosenbaum could not possess it is perhaps a reason why Jojo tried to steal the gun. But they're not saying that Kyle shot him because of those things. Oh my God, there's a cause-effect fallacy that permeates this entire article. Rittenhouse shot and killed Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber during citywide protests. Protests, really? Not riots? Okay. Following the police shooting of Jacob Blake in August 2020. Rittenhouse was charged with first-degree intentional homicide, first-degree reckless homicide, and attempted first-degree intentional reckless homicide. Gage Grosskreutz, who was also injured in the shooting, survived the incident. Rittenhouse has claimed he opened fire in self-defense. Yes, in self-defense. Not as retaliation for Rosenbaum being a sex offender. And not simply to deny the gun to Rosenbaum because Rosenbaum had a prior felony. He previously entered a not guilty plea to several charges related to the deadly shooting. Rittenhouse's lawyer alleged Rosenbaum chased the armed teen through a parking lot and attempted to disarm him before being shot. Okay, that part is accurate. It is the defense's position that Rosenbaum sought to arm himself by stealing Mr. Rittenhouse's weapon because he could not legally purchase a firearm due to his status as a convicted sex offender, the motion stated. Right, but that doesn't mean that that's the reason why Kyle shot him. Some legal experts have questioned the effectiveness of such an argument. I'm not a legal expert, and I question it as well. We're not saying that Mark Richards' reasoning here is sound, or that Judge Schroeder's going to go for it. Frankly, I think it's a bit of a stretch. It's not quite to the level of Binger and all, but it's still a little bit of a stretch in my opinion. I think it's a creative strategy, Dmitry Shaknovich, adjunct assistant professor at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, told Oxygen.com. I think the lawyer is duty-bound to present that strategy. It's every lawyer's duty to look into and present every available defense that is sound in law. That is part of zealously advocating for your client. That is true. It does not apply to the prosecution. Binger is abusing his office, in my opinion. 
The Brooklyn legal scholar said the approach laid out by Rittenhouse's lawyers in motions filed this week could be difficult to swing as a credible defense. I tend to agree. Rittenhouse's attorneys, Shaknovich explained, ultimately was proved the teenager was in imminent danger when he pulled the trigger. That's incorrect. That's wrong. Rittenhouse's attorneys don't have to prove shit. It's the prosecution that must prove that the teenager could not have believed he was in imminent danger. Come on, guys. This is, he's supposed to be a legal scholar and he doesn't know this. It's not like, it's not like Wisconsin is bizarre in this sense. Typically, self-defense laws in most states follow this pattern. Okay, so I decided, let's take a look at the background of Dmitry Shakinovich. Now, keep in mind, he is supposed to be a legal scholar, and we're talking about what? Self-defense. Let's see what he's got. First of all, he's an adjunct assistant professor. In other words, part-time instructor, not a professor. He got his Juris Doctorate in 2013, so he's only been a lawyer for eight years at most. Dmitry Shaknovich represents clients in criminal cases and matters in civil litigation. What? He is the founder of the law firm of Dmitry Shaknovich, based in downtown Manhattan. And I've been looking here. It looks like a one-person deal. It looks like he got his law license and he opened up his own little shop. Background and experience. In the realm of criminal defense, Mr. Shaknovich has represented individual and corporate defendants charged with or investigated for crimes involving, okay, now get this, mail fraud and wire fraud, fraud involving health care agencies, financial institutions, securities, benefits and corporations, various computer crimes, crimes involving public corruption, invasion of privacy, weapons possession, narcotics distribution, and various other white-collar and violent crimes. I mean, does he specialize in anything? His experience in representing clients under investigation extends to complex criminal, governmental, regulatory, and internal investigations. What does he not do? On the civil side, <laughs> Mr. Shaknovich has represented clients in personal injury matters in which clients had suffered enormous physical harm, domestic relation matters including divorce, child support, custody and abuse neglect, Complex commercial litigation involving contract disputes, breach of fiduciary duties, restrictive covenants and fraud, employment matters, and matters in the entertainment sector. Okay, do you get the picture? This guy will take any case. It doesn't matter to him. He'll take on any case. Over the years, Mr. Shaknovich and his high-profile legal work have been sought out by some of the most well-recognized publications and media outlets in the world including Bleacher Report? Oh, my God. The Huffington Post. Okay, so in other words, he will say what you want to hear. If you're looking for somebody to make a comment on your article and you want him to say something, he'll say it. Whether or not it's a defense that will work, at the end of the day, self-defense is different in every state. True, but the elements are kind of similar. Ugh. Shaknovich added, if somebody threatens you, if somebody pushes you, you can't take out a gun and shoot them in the head. Yeah, okay, sure. The response has to be reasonable in light of the danger. Okay, sure. That may be problematic in terms of this particular defense, because you left out other things. Why not read the Wisconsin statutes before you get in there and start blabbing your mouth away? Where do they get these guys? Meanwhile, prosecutors attempted to introduce evidence that Rittenhouse is affiliated with the Proud Boys far-right group and insist he's been celebrated after the shooting instead of being punished. So what? This is really bizarre. I mean, look, I don't believe that Mark Richards is going to be successful in his attempt to get Rosenbaum's past criminal behavior into the trial, but it's not wild. This is truly wild. This is freaky.
much like members of the Proud Boys take pride in violence, okay, there is no substantiation for that claim here, the defendant is evidently proud that he killed two people and seriously wounded a third. There is no evidence of that either. And by the way, we've been letting Jason Zaff off the hook here for too long. If he's going to put his name on this crap, we need to start targeting him for some scorn. Maybe he's as dumb as Binger. He has posed for selfies as if he is a celebrity. And what the hell does that have anything to do with anything? His family has sold merchandise with his image on it that celebrates his acts of violence. And no, they have not. That is a blatant lie. And Schroeder should call him on it. And Richard should inform Schroeder of it. The fact that he has since celebrated his notoriety strongly suggests that he set out to achieve the goal of becoming famous. Good grief. Conjecture, conjecture, conjecture. No evidence of any of that anywhere. The teen's lawyers have vigorously denied he's involved with the white nationalist movement. There is no evidence that Mr. Rittenhouse is a member of the Proud Boys, his defense states. There is no evidence that Mr. Rittenhouse is a member of any organization related to race or political hate groups. There has been no evidence that any witness involved in this matter is now or has ever previously been a member of an organization such as the Proud Boys. Those are pretty strong statements to make, unlike the rule abstractions that Binger and Zaff are creating here. Rittenhouse's legal team has further argued that Huber and Grosskreutz were part of a mob that had hunted down their client after shots had been fired. The court records accused Huber of hitting Rittenhouse with a skateboard while his face was being stomped. Well, yeah, I mean, that's on video. Although, to say that his face was being stomped, certainly Dropkick Man tried to stomp his face, but I'm not sure he actually did. So, that might be a little bit of a stretch. The teenager's attorneys are also trying to have a charge removed that states that Rittenhouse was breaking the law by possessing an AR-15 style rifle as a minor. He was 17 years old at the time of the shooting. His attorney has also accused prosecutors of withholding crucial evidence in the case. We intend to be ready if the government provides us all the information we're entitled to, Richards said. And I'm not sure what evidence there is. I heard something about it. And I'm going to have to dig that out, but I can't comment right now. A hearing regarding the motions is scheduled for August. Rittenhouse's trial, which has been delayed, is expected to get underway on November 1st. No way. Not going to happen. It's going to be delayed again. Why? The appeals. I have another video on that, by the way. Earlier this year, prosecutors sought a warrant for Rittenhouse's arrest, claiming he violated his bail conditions. Okay, um, we already heard about that. Schroeder already listened to the prosecutors and decided, no, nothing to see here. Keep moving. A hearing regarding the motions earlier this year, prosecutors sought a warrant for Rittenhouse's arrest, claiming he violated his bail conditions. And that is where the article ends, but it shouldn't have. Judge Schroeder ruled on that. He proclaimed that the prosecutor's motions were unreasonable. He denied their motions. Why doesn't the author of this article say so? He leaves it hanging, making the reader think that Kyle is still under this fugitive gun. Nothing could be further than the truth. Kyle is not a fugitive from justice. He has not violated any bail conditions. And this is lying by omission. This is why I say it's so important that you read between the lines and you read everything carefully. And when they cite these lawyers and stuff, look into their backgrounds. It may not mean anything. Mr. Shaknovich, probably a very nice guy, and he might be a really good lawyer. The trouble is he's only been a lawyer for eight years, and yet he lists about 30 areas of expertise. How much could he really know about self-defense? He doesn't specialize in anything. He'll take on any job. All he needs is the money. And I don't want to denigrate him. Hey, man, he's got to make a living. I get that. But to cite him as an expert in self-defense? Really? I mean, there are other people they could have called in. 
Messiah Ayub is somebody you could have called in and asked him. What about Andrew Branca? Now, these guys know self-defense laws. They are legitimate experts in this area. Shaknovich is not. And he has no business contributing his opinions to this piece. As it stands, this is absolutely one of the worst articles I have ever read. The author is making no attempt whatsoever to understand what's taking place here. Yes, Mark Richards is claiming that Joseph Rosenbaum, as a felon, could not possess that rifle, and therefore the attempt to take the rifle, and therefore he attempted to take that rifle, and that's why, and that's why Joseph Rosenbaum tried to take Kyle's rifle, because he could not legally possess one, and he wanted one. That doesn't mean that Kyle shot him because of that. Yes, Joseph Rosenbaum has a pretty nasty past when it comes to raping boys, okay? We get that. But that doesn't mean Kyle shot him because of that. Richards wants to bring those elements in to provide the jury a more context in what took place and context in what Kyle Rittenhouse was experiencing when he was being chased. Personally, I believe it's a stretch. I don't think Judge Schroeder is going to go for it. If I'm the judge in this case, I don't think I would even go for it. But I understand the argument, at least. This author doesn't. Like my video, subscribe to my channel.